，大陆哈，台湾啊，哎，我认为台湾不会来的，选举嘛哈，还是会来啊。大陆在哪里？上面，啊，全部都在上面了、啊。哎，今天大陆比较小 ，OK， 你们没有去投票啊？啊、好了再来，好了再来，哦，这么急，<笑>对啦，就昨天嘛，是不是？昨天，昨天我就结束了，我知道，我知道。不过昨天我也说，如果晚一点来，昨天没关系啊，做晚才了。是，塞车。啊？师傅，塞车塞得好严重哦。塞车才这样啊、哦？当然，有选好了哈，啊。就好的公民哈，<笑>啊，恭喜了！<笑>哎呀，国家的领导人好不好是看看人民啊，啊，是吗？看多数那个人民的业障啊，好不好也不能怪他哈、啊。<笑> OK， <笑>我也晚来了，我也要投票，要投票。<笑>我等等一下告诉你们，我怎么票投票的。<笑> Thank you。OK。哎，你们回来了啊？回家处理事情哈。哎，处理好了，狗猫都还在啊。啊，很好。<笑>有时候我们不在，他们反而好。<笑>对啊 ，I hate moving houses. Everybody does, except when you move to something much better, yeah, and more comfortable, or just the way you want it, or the house that you would want to, or the place that you want to be. Then you're looking forward or excited to pack things, but. Uh, I'm not excited anymore. <laughs> I will be more excited if I move to India, for example, Rishikesh, you know, in a mud house. Yes, that's the place I would like to be. I'd be excited <laughs> if I was free to move. Or I'll go to maybe Thailand, that little $3,000 house. Yeah. Or maybe Hong Kong. Yeah. Or maybe the Spanish cave. Wow, those are good, good, good places that I would like to move to. Feel so free, you know. Feel free, free, free. The best is the freedom in the world. Not to talk about inside freedom, but outside freedom. Yes, I will tell you why I'm late. Yesterday was the Taiwan day of election. People had to go and vote. Yeah, pro con. Yeah, <laughs> this and that. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it's all the same. <laughs> I look at them all the same <laughs> it, because they're so far all pure, you know, all good, all wonderful. <laughs> so they all the same to me. <laughs> it's just their karma. It's maybe not the same, and their promise is to be all the same, similar. Yeah, we, you know, serve the world, serve the country, serve the people above all, and you know. Beyond myself and <laughs> everything, so it sounds similar. Looks similar to me. Yeah. Anyway, inside or outside, inside the soul is pure and clean and wonderful. Outside, similar promises. Yes. So, whatever you vote, eh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yes. And I just told the Taiwanese that. Uh, Uh, the president is good or not good. It depends on you. You know, the leader of the country, good or not good, depends on you. I mean, depends on the people of Taiwan, on the karma, yeah, of the country, and then also the collective karma of the in the world. Yes. I have a lot of collective karma myself. So, <laughs> if you just take care of a few people. The karma is less, of course. If you take care of a lot of people, and and you take care of the world, the universe is a different collective kind of bin. Okay, yeah. Today, 
I was told not to come see you at all. <laughs> I will lose more worth again. Losing worth is a terrible thing. People will not listen to you, people will not respect you, people will do the opposite thing. Your own people, yes. And if worse than that, if you're not strong enough, you'll be persecuted, like many of the masters in the past. Or you have to run for safety, or you, you have to bear many uh, degrading humiliations and all kinds of wrongly accused, all kinds of things that will happen to you. And heavens cannot help you at that time because you are nobody. You are worse than the criminal in hell. Yes. They do what they want with you. If you lose too much of this worth or you lost all of it, it depends, okay? Yes. To, to die because of losing worth is not the worst case scenario. The worst is that you can't live, you can't die. There are so many things. I am worn again and again. I should uh, take a rest. But I was remembering how whenever I walk through here, all of the faces so lit up and smiling <laughs> and saying, Oh, Master, I love you, we love you all, and I cannot bear not to come. I cannot, I just remember all this. So beautiful faces, you know. I don't mean because you're beautiful, as you are also, but when you lit up, your smile and your eyes are sparkling like diamonds. When you see me coming in, I cannot just, just, just forget it like that. I, I just forget everything else. I just remember your faces when you're so happy to see me. And I see your, your heartfelt sincerity. You're not doing that because I'm a movie star or so because, you, because your party tells you you have to clap because your leader is coming <laughs> or because your boss is telling a good joke so you have to laugh. You know, it's not like that. It's just you came here from thousands of miles away, you know, from different situations, different difficulties, you know, with bureaucracy, with business, family, with you know, health, whatever issues that you have, you just throw them out of the window for the moment, or you just come, just because you want to see me. Some people, like in, in China, some places, they don't always have good transportation. They have to walk, or they have to go with the horse, or the, you know, I don't know, neuter, <laughs> you know, like an ox cart or something, to, to get to the... Uh, the more, you know, uh, urban area to get a bus or taxi or whatever, yeah. Some areas are still difficult, you know. Yeah, so even like in Mongolia, you stay with the herd of your horses or your cattle. And then uh, there is no bus over there. You have to stay in a wilderness with the vast fields of uh, grass, yeah, and with a little... Mongolian girl, and then you stay there. You're happy, of course, but if you need to go somewhere, and you have to go on the horse, or <laughs> you walk miles long until you find something else which is faster. And then you have to, maybe over there you don't have the internet, you can't book a ticket, you have to go first to the airport and wait in a queue and something like that. For example, today, uh, if you want to go back to Hong Kong, if you didn't book your ticket, then you can't rebook it because a lot of people go back to Hong Kong for some reason today. One of your brothers told me. And heavens, they do not consider us. Of course, they do not consider these things. <laughs> they don't need to. They just think, then everything happens. They think they want to go to Taiwan, they just go. Okay? Yeah, like they are around here now, they don't have to go on a bus, a horse cart, or on the back of a buffalo or whatever. First people who, who uh, happen to go to heaven, or lower heavens, or even higher heavens, they, they don't really care much about us. And they cannot progress very well spiritually, unless they already have a master on earth, and that master is also present everywhere, so he or she teaches them continuously, and then they can escape from this kind of higher bondage. 
a golden bondage. Because when you're in heaven, you're too happy, <laughs> too comfortable. Uh, you don't think of anything else. You think that's it. That's eternity. That's the final destination. So you see many people from near death experiences that came back. They did not want to come back. Even they just go to maybe astral level or second level, maximum third level. It's mostly like that. 99% is like that. Only practitioners of the light and sound method, maybe they can go a little higher. Yes. But it's really like that, really. And even then, astral level, second level, third level, nobody wants to go back to this world. Yeah, so there's another trap waiting for us up there. If we don't practice well, if we don't have a master, then it's easy to be trapped, not just in this world, <laughs> but even in a higher world, yes. You see the light in this world, you know, like the moth, you like it. But in the astral world, the light is brighter. And the second level, even brighter, third level, brighter, and everything is better, better all the time. Nothing in this world will make you want to come back. Nothing. Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. Even your lover, your wife, your kids, your parents, your possessions of billions of dollars, you never want any of them. You don't want any of that, anything to do with those things. You just want to stay there forever. And so your life will be like that forever, in there, all kinds of happiness, and bliss, and carefree, and anywhere you want to go, just go like that. You don't need to wait, no need visa, no need so much trouble like here. And even in this world, sometimes you go through the trouble to get visas, and you still may not get it. In some countries, you don't just get a visa like this. Yeah, this is a problem. There's another reason why I always try to come to see you, despite my wellness or warning, even from the ultimate master. Yeah, because I'm here with you. I know all the problems you have. They don't know. Hmm? Yeah. Come sit here, guys. Up here, there are some places, yeah. And sometimes even Chinese people, sometimes they don't get visas just like that. Just like you, English or Americans. You go anywhere, just oof, even online. <laughs> you don't even have to go anywhere. <laughs> Stay in your home, tuk, 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 tuk. online, get a visa, for example. I also have to go online for my passport because I can't, <laughs> I can't just travel all the time. I just hope my passport is intact and comes back a new one, not lost on the way, and then I'll be... I don't know what I will do. <laughs> I have only one passport. Yeah. I hold it dear as if it's my life, because it symbolizes also my freedom. Yeah. At least I can go anywhere without that passport. <laughs> I don't know what would happen then. Yeah, in some countries, you don't just get a visa like that for any different reasons, religious reasons, and political reasons, and uh, whatever reasons. <laughs> I don't know what kind of reasons, <laughs> but whatever reason, there is no reason to be like that in our world. But this is like that. But I was better already, imagine before. Before, the Taiwanese could not even go anywhere, <laughs> except go into Kaohsiung, yeah, <laughs> or Taipei. <laughs> you know, you can go the whole length of the country, or cross it, yeah, free, yeah. Well, that's already very good. <laughs> In some older times, if you remember, you could not even go from one district to another without a permission, a stamp or something like that. Some countries before were like that. So our world is truly getting better. It's just snail pace for me, you know? Snail. <laughs> oh, turtle. Turtle pace for me. Too slow. But it's getting better, yeah? More civilized, right? At least like that. We have to practice more in order to have wisdom, but it's very difficult for you. 
to, to feel the difference between wisdom and your own judgment. I'll tell you some example of wisdom and your own preconceived ideas, judgments. I have written it. Point, 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 you know, so that I can talk to you, so that you can be more aware of the traps of your own mind and your own uh, customs, society customs and prejudices. Yes. But I moved and I walked the whole little house. I couldn't find it. It was together with my diary. I cannot find it just now. And I was already late negotiating to come out to see you. I wasn't successful in negotiating, but I say I go anyway. And then I still could not find my <laughs> things that I wanted to tell you. <laughs> so it's later and later. And then I call one of your brothers just to ask whether or not he had what he needed to go, okay? And he told me every other thing except that question. So I had to scream at him, okay, <laughs> just tell me, you got it or not? <laughs> and he said, got it. <laughs> I said, okay, thank you. Now go <laughs> with God. I was already in a hurry to come to see you. And he talked about the history of his unpacking and packing his luggage. <laughs> yeah. And I asked him, where are you? He didn't tell me that. He told me many other things. I just asked, where are you? <laughs> One simple question. Another question, did you get what I sent? And that's all I asked. Everything else he can tell me on another day. I'm telling you. But I have one thing that you need desperately, and all of you must have, should have, wisdom. I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> Otherwise you think, oh, Master, you're boasting. How do we know if you have wisdom? Very simple, very simple to check. I'm not lying to you, I cannot. If you have a little brain and you understand English or Chinese, well, I'm going to prove it to you. I had it all on a little piece of paper, but I couldn't find it. So what I remember, I tell you, okay, huh? It's not the same though, maybe, maybe I can't remember as good as I want to remember. For example, one thing, when I was in Hungary, okay, I'm not trying to blame anybody, I'm just trying to give you lessons. So don't judge them, huh? Okay. There were many dogs that they adopted. You know, later I took them with me because I didn't think they'd take good care in Hungary the way they did. When I was there, I took them in my trailer every night to give them some warm things to eat with me, and they loved, loved, loved it. <laughs> okay. They were dogs, yeah? And the whole yard was uh, muddy because of winter, you know? The ice and the rain and muddy, muddy. And the dogs, paw, of course, muddy. And I was wearing a white coat. I needed to go to see you. So one or two dogs jump on me. I say, no jump, just like that, no jump. <laughs> Try to jump, I say, no jump. And then later one of your brothers told me, you scare the dogs. I say, what did I do? You say, no jump. I said, wow. And you let them sleep outside in the mud, in the cold, in the snow, minus 20, minus 30, you don't think it scares them? You think that is better than when I just uh, tell them not to jump, you think you have more compassion than me, huh? So that is wisdom and judgment. Immediately when I went there, I saw their situation. One of the dogs had a very thin hair. If they had thicker hair, maybe they could have it. Some of them had a thicker hair, but one, boyo, very thin. I could see the skin, oh my God, and he had no room, no cover shed outside. Not even the dog house, you understand me? The dog house maybe had the front open, but everywhere else was closed. Nothing. Just a little cemented, no, not cemented. You know those kinds of uh, wavy cemented pieces of uh, sheet they make the roof with sometimes? So one sheet of that attached to the wall. That's all he had. And of course he dug a hole, you know, as much as he could with such a hard winter, solid ground to have a little shallow hole and he slept in there. Immediately I said, we have to cover all this. 
and I gave them warm food every night with me together in my trailer. That is real love, okay? And not to judge me like I scolded the dogs, not to jump on me. My love is not to let them jump on me, but to teach them not to jump on me. We have dogs, yeah? All the dog experts will tell you, teach your dogs not to jump on people. Because if they get used to it, they jump on children. And children might fall, or uh, uh, fragile elderly, and they might fall and hurt themselves. Is that good? No. no. So you understand the real love and just superficial love. And the judgment, yeah, and the wisdom. Love has to go with wisdom, okay? Not just uh, say, okay, love, love, love. The astral, <laughs> astral sentiment is different from true love. Astral sentiment, a binding karmic bondage, they are not real love. That love can break any time as long as the karma is no longer there, it's broken. Or some situation is better, that love will move to another object. <laughs> you understand? These are different loves. Real love never dies. Real love doesn't change. Real love is always there and with wisdom. Another thing. I just remember what I tell you what, okay? Maybe I don't remember all. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good. For example, okay, when I treated the Chinese from China to go eat with me, I chose the elderly. I told them to choose the elderly because I, I explained to them that older people have less chance to have that. Younger people will maybe, maybe not, but have more chance to come to see me than the elderly. Of course, maybe tomorrow they're sick, they don't feel well not to come, or they might pass away. And just to let them eat with me one time, that will make them remember forever. And that will boost their happiness in their old age, when children are not <laughs> often visiting them anymore, when society doesn't feel the need for them anymore, when uh, they just stay sometimes alone, cook for themselves, even when they're not well, they have to do everything for themselves. That will boost their happiness. That is good, not because I discriminate. And then the next day, it's not their turn anymore. It's going back to usual. Usual is that the Westerners, they sit here. Because we are a hospitable race of beings, we are Asians. We treat guests very, very nicely, yeah, uh, cordially and, and truly with, with love, yeah, with welcomingness. So that's what we do. And then the brother thinks that he should bring all the older Chinese people to come here because Master did that. And he'd be a good guy, you know, <laughs> good police, bad police. And then I have to come, <laughs> either I have to move them or it just a surprise. So of course I did not move them, but I was not very pleased because it's not a Chinese turn anymore. And he did that just to copy, just to show people that he's a good guy and make me become a bad guy if I have to move the Chinese away. The Chinese or Taiwanese look similar, okay? So if you take up all the best places and give our guests even China or Vietnam or Cambodia, we are very near and we have shorter legs. So we can squeeze together. We're used to it. We like family ties. Even now, many families still stay together. Older people and children and grandchildren all stay together in the same house. They like family style. They like neighborly closeness. That's us, the Asians. But mostly the Westerners, their legs are long. You give them a little room so they sit in the front. They came farther than most of us. The Taiwanese, we are here. <laughs> and then the Vietnamese, just <laughs> the neighbor. And Asians, they all look the same. So we let the Westerners mostly have some privilege. And I told the kitchen to cook something nice for them to eat. Maybe a little different from what we, the Taiwanese or Chinese, or I eat normally. 
because the, the Westerners, they don't have a chance to cook such a beautiful food for themselves. They don't know how. So we, as a host, good host, we give them the best. That's not because I look down upon the Chinese or the Vietnamese or the Taiwanese, but I want the Westerners to have the best as the guests. That is good for Taiwanese and Chinese as a whole, good for your reputation. They come from different countries in the West, America, Germany, Austria, you name it. They come from different countries. They go home, they tell their people, oh, you know the Chinese. Oh, they are just such fantastic people. And that is good for your country or not? And you think, you have to compete with me. Uh, you do your ego talk, and you don't do what has a deeper meaning, and you don't do what I teach you. That's not love, that's just showing off. Just copy, and cheap copy, okay? And then if I go correct that uh, brother in charge, then uh, everybody will think, oh, master, uh, you so discriminating, yeah? You like the Westerners, you don't like us. It's not true at all. You have to look deeper inside of everything before you judge anybody or even master. Everyone of the Westerners, when they come home, they will spread your names, your reputation, they will love. And every country will welcome more Chinese because they don't know who is Chinese, who is Vietnamese, who is... <laughs> On the first look, they don't know if it's Chinese or Korean. Even all the Asian people, Korean, Chinese, Taiwanese, Vietnamese, Burmese, Cambodia, Thailand, etc. I made you a good deal. That is if you think of business, if you want to think that way also. But what I thought was that the, the Westerners, they're so sincere, they came from such a long way. To, to such a place. They have better countries. <laughs> you understand? If you go to Europe, you see how it looks like. Everywhere looks so clean, tidy, beautiful. And they came to us. Eh? We are not all that tidy and, 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 and magnificent like the European countries. I'm telling you the truth. No? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. If you go to Europe, you know. It's um, a little bit more civilized. <laughs> I'm sorry to offend you. At least on the outside, eh? the houses are beautiful. Many quarters still preserve the old, old buildings, and they are like palaces. The architecture, the way they build, the way they organize their streets, and everything is absolutely wonderful. That's my type of country, my type of buildings and streets and organized society, my type. And they don't mind whatever we are. They love your master. They come to see your master, taking all their holidays and some of their savings. In Europe, because the standard of living is higher than in Taiwan or in most Asian countries, so even they earn a lot, they spend a lot. So for them to spend the money to buy the ticket to come here, it costs a lot for them. In Asia, we live simple and frugal. We don't care much about the outside appearance. Therefore, we don't spend a lot of money. We can save some, but in Europe, you have to have the standards. Like in America, one old lady, she's too old to mow her grass outside her garden. The police came and took her to jail. <laughs> and later, all the neighbors, the youth who came and helped her, every week to mow her grass so that she didn't have to go to jail anymore. And I was in uh, one of the trailer parks in Belgium. Trailer park only. You understand what I'm saying? The big park and everybody buys a trailer, parks it there, and, and pays the, the rent for the land. Yeah? That the land belongs to a community or one person, then you pay the rent every, every year. It's not much, about 1,000 euros or something. But your grass, your garden, you have to trim. Even if you have just a little square of grass like this, I mean, how much garden can you have in a trailer park? I have about this square piece of grass and some planted uh, flowers that they already had there. But I had to take care of it. The neighbor made sure. They told me, 
you have to trim this and that. Like all the neighbors have to do it. Trail a park. You imagine that you think only poor people live there. Oh, not necessarily. And then my dogs, you know, sometimes I let them out quickly and they just do their things <laughs> on that piece of grass. Dogs, you know, they scratch it to cover whatever. And then the neighbors, see what he's doing? You see what he's doing? <laughs> really, I'm not joking. You think it's a laughing thing. It is like that. They live by, you know, order rules. Many countries are very exceptionally famous for being Ordnung, order, yeah, like Germany, Switzerland, all of the European countries are mostly like that. Sunday you cannot make smoke, you cannot uh, burn your leaves in the garden, you cannot uh, cut the trees <laughs> without permission, and uh, every other thing. You cannot litter on the street, if they catch you, you have to be fine. So much, so much. And then they come here. We are very disorderly here sometimes, jumping for blessed food and squeezing to see the master, all those things. They are not so used to it. And their legs are long. I want to give them a little more room to cross their legs even. And you can see sometimes they put it out here and there. And <laughs> so it's not like I don't have love for you or I discriminate between the Western and the Asian. There are many benefits of treating them well for themselves, as well as for you. Hmm? And their love for your country will bless your country also. And the people who hear a good story from your country, your special hospitable treatment to them, they hear the story also feel very happy. You know, and the atmosphere is happy. The more happy the atmosphere, the better for our world and for you, of course. We live here, we live in this world. So you have to think deeper and not so hurriedly criticize your master huh? or anybody, okay? They are two similar things. Uh, no, not really similar, different, but what I mean is between the wisdom and the, the mind judgmental kind of attitude or habit, you must cut it out. Cut it out. Copying is not good for you. Mostly not. You have to have your own initiative, your own inventiveness, your own renewal, you know? Renewal wisdom, renewal knowledge, renewal type of doing things. You always have to improve. You, you learn with me, but you don't copy me in my doing, because sometimes you copy differently. You don't understand the meaning behind it, and you just copy blindly. That's no good. You have to know logic and reason, not to talk about wisdom yet. Mm. All of you should be my friends. I guess I got the worst kind, <laughs> as already predicted. I mean, it's my own vow. Even uh, Shikamuni Buddha, he also had former enemies, of course, and because of that, for three months long he had to eat horse feed, for example, like that. But these things are mentioned very little, so we only see that one. Yeah? And somebody tried to assassinate him and cut off his toe, we only see that too. <laughs> and another one is that he, he ate some mushrooms which were poisonous and then he died. That's three. But he must have suffered more than that. Instead of dying young, at least he live until a ripe old age, yeah? So, at least, uh, it wasn't too bad. Many masters don't fare that well. Like, for example, our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah, he didn't fare well. Three and a half years he preached and then he, he was crucified like that. But there is a difference between enemies and people who have harmed you before, but with your permission. Like uh, Sekamoni Buddha, he had five, the first five disciples who have been long, 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 <laughs> I don't know how long ago, have been living off his blood, of Sekamoni Buddha's blood. But he gave it voluntarily to ease their pang of hunger. And so that in the future he could also give them his blood lineage of enlightenment and wisdom.
Okay, that is different. Therefore, the Buddha stayed with these five disciples. For example, there are more than just these five. He stayed with them every day, but they didn't harm him. It's just the enemies who deliberately harm you by jealousy, by wickedness, by all kinds of other mentalities, then would harm you again and again. Like Devadatta, for example. He was life after life, his enemy, an arch enemy of the Buddha. So he harmed him all the time. Even when the Buddha was already a Buddha, <laughs> he still harmed him in different ways. Yes. So luckily, the Buddha lived it long, so he could give us many, many sermons, and now the whole world still can benefit. Well, not the complete whole world. When we say the whole world, it's just some. <laughs> yeah, some big numbers of people, the Buddhist followers, yeah? We often say the whole world, for example, like that, but it's not like 100%, huh? okay? Yes, but that's very good already because we only need some percentage of the critical mass in order to save the world or to move some action forward, yeah, that benefits the multitude, yes. So it is like that, yes. Just like when the Buddha was alive, they say he saved the world, oh, Jesus saved the world, yeah, so other masters, etc., saved the world, so it's like that, yes. And other people, even though not followers, also benefit, of course. So in a way, in a way, the world is saved, as long as the Messiah is still alive. Yes, so as Jesus say the same, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's another thing that I told you about not having wisdom. Mm? Just follow your habitual thinking and your uh, narrow knowledge and very unintelligent mind, yeah, brain, yes. I do what I can to earn my upkeep, <laughs> okay? Not just designing, but modeling, hmm? So that I'm worthy to be a citizen of the world, that I'm taking care of my own uh, needs, that I don't bother anyone. You are already burdened with your tax, your family, your, your own uh, expenses to exist in this world. I don't want to bother you at all. And if you want to do anything with your money, that's your problem, okay? I don't want to burden you. Because if I ask one word, you give everything to me. I know that. Is that, is that not so? Yes? I know that, yes. But I don't ever ask, because I know you will give. Even if you give, I refuse not to talk about asking you. Because I know this life is so difficult for normal people to earn money and to save it. Even to come here, it's, it's cost them something. That's why I, I appreciate the Westerners when they come all the way from their countries, from Brazil, from wherever. You know, it takes sometimes two or three days with changing planes and everything. And they don't have that much money. You don't think the Westerners are all very rich. No. All the rich people, you already know them in Forbes magazine, or on TV, or in the newspaper. Other people are ordinary. Eh? 99%, right? That's what I say, right? 99% are normal, average, or just barely survive. Yeah, just enough to survive. So, I cannot, as a master, use my power, my position, to ask for more. I am capable. Unless I'm not capable, then I will maybe need that, just for clothing. Then I would wear simple clothes, just like this. Yeah, one or two pairs are enough already, just like in the Himalayas. But I want to help also, not just not to burden you, my so-called disciples, but I want to help others who are more in need more incapable than myself. You know, like the disabled people, the elderly who nobody take care of, the orphans, the disaster victims, I help as much as I can. Not just the money, but their happiness, the feelings. Oh, the master, all the way from Taiwan or Spain, from England, think of us, the victims, and give us something that 
comfort their souls. They just lost everything. They lost their loved ones also. So it's not just the money or or pack of rice or just pack of candy for the kids, but it's the comfort of the soul, the heart, in the time of need. Most people, they have dignity. They don't want to accept things from other people. It's just they're truly desperate in that situation, and we go help them. That makes them happy, feeling the world still has love. The world people still have love. So they comfort it, and they feel more encouraged to go on, to restart anew. Because once they feel comforted and happy, ideas will come, you know, good energy. You flow through them, around them, into them, and they can think better. Yeah, they can be more happy. They can live on, and are not so depressed or wanting to die with their relatives or friends or whoever's lost because they lost everything and they feel very depressed. So that they might not be able to think straight. So this is why I help them. Yeah, not because of the money, not because of the things only which they maybe need for a few days until they get better help somewhere or bigger help from the government. Because in some remote areas sometimes we go, the government's help might not be able to reach it so quickly yet. Or other charities might not organize so quickly. We do what we can. Yeah. I cannot help the whole world, but I help wherever I can, wherever I know I can. That's, that's just about it. I think it's time you Taiwanese have to go anyway, right? You Taiwan Oh, I forgot. Also, the people who sell things outside, right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I cannot do like the clock. Yeah, like every hour thing, I cannot. I have other things to do. And my body doesn't always listen to me, okay? So, never mind. We. We will stop now, otherwise everybody will <laughs> not like me anymore. <laughs> Your stomach will not like me. Huh? The Taiwanese people won't like me. The bus driver won't like me. The, the, the merchants outside selling vegetables. <laughs> the vegetables will go dry, don't like me. Okay, you go. Okay, next time, huh? Thank you. Mm. Thank you for everything. Okay, see you next time, huh? Okay? You know the light can make your face look different. And the camera angle can make you look different too. I know that. I take, I take uh, photos myself, yeah. Because sometimes you take a photo of a flower or something, it depends on the angle, if they will look good or not. Yeah. And, and they will like bust out like alive, or, or just be flat, or, or look like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking you every time, if you do something, do it unconditionally. And if not, don't do it. And I'm just thinking maybe we don't like anything special anymore because then people, other people will be envious and don't understand my intention and then thinking I treat the Westerner better or... I don't know. I don't know if we should continue making special food for special people or not. Maybe not, huh? When I was in India, <laughs> often I didn't even have food. Not to talk about any special food. Well, they came and ate everything <laughs> and left me with mountains of dishes to wash. I don't remember how I survived all these kind of uh, situations. Yeah, that was in the ashram. Eh? Thank you. And I love you. That's important, more than anything else. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> really, really love you. I am going now. Thank you, all of you. Whoever loves me, thank you for your love. <laughs>